How might digital technology contribute to fostering inclusion in primary education? In order to discuss the topic of the contribution of digital technology in fostering inclusion in primary education, we must first look at the term inclusion and what this entails. At first, inclusion was associated with pupils with special educational needs and disabilities. However, over the years this has broadened to be associated with all pupils, referring to people's abilities, gender, race and religion, not just pupils with SEND. Essentially, inclusion is, in, is valuing all individuals, giving equal access and opportunity to all, and removing discrimination and other barriers to involvement. It is the responsibility of the teacher to enable inclusion in the classroom towards all children. They must make reasonable adjustments to prevent disabled and other disadvantaged children being put at a more substantial disadvantage. So how can teachers use digital technology to foster inclusion in their classroom? First of all, digital technology for inclusion refers to using digital resources, which is accessible for everyone of all abilities. These digital resources can range from websites to interactive whiteboards and apps on iPads. This use of technology in the classroom has rapidly increased over the years with the view that technology has an increasingly valuable impact on children's learning. This is because the use of digital resources can motivate and engage pupils in the learning, enabling all children to access it. Paul concurs this view when he states that ICT in general can have a positive impact on motivation, self-esteem and achievement. Pupils become more engaged in their work, their standards rise and they become motivated to continue their learning in their own time. The interactive whiteboard is a nationally popular choice with teachers for using digital technology in the classroom. This is mainly due to the fact that the IWV enables teachers to use a range of learning styles with it from visual to auditory to engage all pupils within the class. It is believed that the highly visual nature of the tasks on an interactive whiteboard seem to attract children's attention and keep them attentive in ways that tasks at a desk cannot. Despite these positive views, however, the IWB can restrain children's learning if not used effectively, as interactivity should refer to what you should do with the tool rather than a property of it. Another benefit technology has with inclusion in primary education is that it also enables pupils to develop their communication skills and expression, which is profoundly beneficial for pupils on the autistic spectrum, EAL students, as well as children with personal, social and emotional difficulties. There are different ways in which teachers can use digital technology for developing children's communication and social skills. As a computer is not judgmental as seen as a safe environment, children might feel more comfortable in using devices which enable them to express their views electronically rather than in real life situations. For an autistic child, there is a research project called ECHOES, founded by TEL, which enables children on the autism spectrum to develop their communication and social skills. Notwithstanding, it must be noted that the use of digital technology should not be seen as the only way to include children effectively in lessons, but should be embedded in stimulating curriculum and safe classroom environment. There are other digital resources teachers could use in their classrooms, such as Google Translate for students with EAL, enabling the voiceover on an iPad, as well as a picture exchange communication system also available on iPads. The main point for teachers to remember is to know their children in order to use and distribute different teacher styles effectively to all students, which in turn would include all children in the learning. It is argued that the use of technology and lessons supports a move towards more personalised learning in which innovative teachers use different input devices for individual learners' use. This would help contribute to inclusion in primary education due to all pupils being involved in the learning. It is the teacher's responsibility to adapt teaching to respond to both the strengths and needs of all pupils according to the teacher's standards. In conclusion, digital technology has many advantages in fostering inclusion in the primary education and teachers should be aware of this and how to deploy digital resources effectively in their classroom. As Hawkridge and Vincent state, the essential principle we work to is that the technology should be used to magnify abilities that are there, bypassing as much possible cognitive, emotional, physical and sensory disabilities.